Do you want to get your Android apps on the big screen? Well, we've made it easier than ever before. Hi, I'm Leon Nichols from the Google Developer Relations team, and I'm going to tell you about the Google Cast SDK version 3 for Android. In June 2016, we launched the new version 3 API for the Google Cast SDK. The new Cast SDK simplifies several parts of the previous SDK and addresses the major pain points identified by content partners and developers like you. The new Cast SDK significantly reduces the amount of code needed by providing UI widgets that fully complies with the Cast UX design checklist. First, here is some terminology about how casting works. The Google Cast Sender application refers to an app on a mobile device or laptop, and a receiver application refers to an HTML application running on Chromecast or other Google Cast receiver devices. Let's take a look at the typical lifecycle of a Cast Sender app. When the Sender app is launched, Cast receiver devices need to be discovered on the local network. Once the user selects a device, a sender app will connect to that device and launch the receiver app. The sender app then creates a message channel to the receiver. The user can also disconnect from that device at any time. The new SDK is based on the design of the CARS companion library and implements these new features. First, the UI widgets that comply with the Google Cast design checklist, notification and lock screen controls, automatic device discovery, so you don't have to manage that in your code, centralized cast session state management, and a reconnection service that automatically handles network issues to keep your sender app connected to the receiver. So even when the user leaves the room, goes out of the range of the network, the session will be automatically reconnected when the user returns. The Google Cast SDK is still part of Android's Google Play services and is shared across all Cast apps. The minimum Android SDK level that the CAS SDK supports is level 9 or gingerbread. In Android Studio, make sure these necessary libraries are installed. Let's take a look at how to add CAS to your app. The CAS framework has a global singleton object, the CAS context, which coordinates all the CAS interactions. You must implement the options provider interface to supply CAS options needed to initialize the CAS context singleton. The most important option is the Receive Application ID, which you get from the Google Cast Developer Console. You can get to the Cast Context instance by using the static Get Shared Instance method. If you've used the V2 SDK before, you must be wondering where is the Google API client? That's not needed anymore to use Cast. Everything is done for you by the V3 framework. For your app's UI, the first step in supporting cast is to add the cast button. The SDK provides a cast button widget that automatically manages its visibility and state and provides all the necessary dialogues for users to select and disconnect devices. The cast button is implemented by the MediaRoute button from the MediaRoute version 7 support library. Like any action icon that you can add to your activity using an action bar or toolbar, you first need to add the corresponding item to your menu. Once you've done that, override the onCreateOptions menu method of each of your activities by using the Cast Button Factory to wire up the MediaRoute button to the Cast Framework. When the user selects a Cast device using the Cast Button menu, the new Cast session is started automatically by the Framework. All the user interactions, including backing out of this menu, are handled by the widget. The list of devices is filtered based on the App ID configuration in the Google Cast Developer Console. For the Cast Framework, a Cast session encapsulates the connection to a device, managing the receiver application, and initializing a media control channel for media apps. Cast sessions are managed by the Session Manager, which can be accessed via the Cast context. The Session Manager listener callbacks can be used to monitor session events such as creation, suspension, resumption, and termination of the session. To play media on the receiver, the Send app has to provide media metadata of the media stream. Here you can see how to set the media type, title, and images using the Media Metadata class. Here you can see how to set the media URL, 
stream type, and other metadata using the Media Info Builder class. The Remote Media Client class is then used to load that media stream on the receiver. The Send app then invokes commands such as Play and Pause using the Remote Media Client instance. The Send app can use the Session Manager listener callbacks to track the session state and determine to when to enable and disable the local media player. Playing media on the receiver is now a breeze. The CAR SDK provides a wizard called the Mini Controller that appears when the user navigates away from the current content page to another part of the app. The Mini Controller provides instant access and is a visible reminder for the current CAR session. The CAR SDK provides a custom view, Mini Controller Fragment, which can be added to the app layout file of the activities in which you want to show the Mini Controller. This is so much easier than the B2SDK, where you had to create the Mini Controller yourself. The Google Cast Design Checklist requires a Send app to implement media controls from a notification and the lock screen. This allows users to always be in control of the media session with convenient playback control buttons. The Cast SDK provides a media notification service to help the Send app build these controls for the notification and lock screen. The media notification service will run in the background when the sender is casting and will show a notification with an image thumbnail, metadata about the current casting item, a play pause button, and a stop button. Here you can see how the notification and lock screen controls can be enabled with the cast options when initializing the cast context. Notifications are then managed for your app by the cast framework. It's that easy. The Google Cast Design Checklist requires the Send app to provide an expanded controller for the media being cast. The expanded controller is kind of like a full screen version of the Mini Controller. The Cast SDK provides a widget for the expanded controller called the Expanded Controller Activity, which is implemented as an abstract class. To add an expanded controller, subclass Expanded Controller Activity and add a cast button. After you've done that, edit the Cast Options Provider and change the Notification Options and Cast Media Options to set the target activity to your subclass of the Expanded Controller activity. The Expanded Controller widget will save you a lot of code if you've used the V2 SDK before. Now that you've integrated Cast with your app, how do you tell your users about it? Well, the Cast SDK provides a custom view called Introductory Overlay. That can be used to highlight the cast button when it's first shown to the user. This code shows you how to use the introductory overlay builder to show the overlay in your activities. That's everything you need to cast enable your sender app. You can get a lot more details about the Google Cast SDK at developers.google.com slash cast. We've also open sourced several sample cast apps that you can use as a reference. If you have any developer questions, post those on Stack Overflow. Join our Google Cast developers community on Google Plus to keep up to date with the new SDK features. Happy casting!